Testing, one, two, three. <laughs> okay, um, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome again for the monthly demo talk. Thank you very much for coming because we know that it's a really chaotic time and quite stressful, but uh, it's a little haven of calm here, so hopefully you'll all leave feeling fairly refreshed. So again, the guest speaker is Lumpi um, Nicholas Tanisaro, who many of you know as the, uh, the Thai monk of UK origin. I'm not going to steal his thunder because uh, he's going to tell you about himself, but he's been a monk for 17 years, um, but he's had Buddhist experience of greater than 20 years. And uh, he's very active in, in Buddhist teaching and has undertaken research at uh, Warwick University and is a, a real advocate of Dhammakaya, uh, certainly in the UK. So this week, he's going to talk to you about his life as a Siamese monk. I mean, many of us are intrigued, um, not least me, by why somebody in the West would just give up all of the things that they know in terms of not just material things, but attachment to things. So attachment to taste, for example, if any of you have read the little book by Kun Yai, um, she talks about, uh, and, and Kun Yai is the, the founder, she's a, a nun, the founder of Dhammakaya. Um, she talks about, she was asked certain questions by the abbot, um, by the great abbot of Wat Paknam, and uh, he asked her, why do you think um, salty fish is so tasty? And she didn't know what he was talking about. And th the fact that she couldn't reply really spoke volumes because she had no attachment to taste. And that's the whole thing behind Buddhism is that you don't have, you sort of relinquish your attachment to things. So hopefully he's going to tell us about what sort of things he eats when he eats, um, what uh, attracted him to relinquishing all of that. Now, I have to tell you that today is special because it's the first anniversary of the monthly talks, the monthly Dhamma talks. And uh, P. Ray's given me a list here of all the talks that we've had since the 21st of December 2012. And I'm just going to pick out a few of them because there's quite a lot here. So we had the law of Kamar, um, overcoming anger, overcoming sorrow, cultivating mindless mindfulness, um, nipping anger in the bud, the power of forgiveness. Actually, I've, I've got quite a, an interesting, it's a very short story, one, something that really resonated with me is that uh, I don't know whether many of you have heard of uh, Patrick Duffy, who used to be um, Bobby Ewing in, in Dallas. And he had a really awful, awful experience. Both of his parents were slain. They had uh, a tavern in Boulder in Colorado. And uh, the guys were imprisoned, uh, the perpetrators were imprisoned. And, uh, and he was asked you know, how he dealt with this, the fact that both of his parents were shot. And he gave the credit to his Buddhist faith and the fact that, you know, it's the power of compassion and forgiveness. And I thought, and he meditates daily. And I remember thinking at the time, you know, meditation must be an incredibly strong tool to overcome that level of grief. So uh, hopefully by coming here and meditating on a frequent basis, we, we just might get a, a little bit of something that gives, makes us more insightful more forgiving. Um, yep, so tonight it's my life as a, a Siamese monk. Um, so it's, it's special as it's th because it's the year's anniversary. And also, apparently, it's the uh, birthday of the vice abbot of the Dhammakaya temple in Thailand. So we're going to have two things that are different. First of all, we'll have a prize draw. <laughs> For all three of three of you that aren't volunteer staff, <laughs> there are three prizes. Um, I better not say what they are, but I think they're to do with the retreat. Um, so, if none of you have experienced the retreat here, it's a, a very worthwhile thing because 
You know, when do you allow yourself to do iterative meditation? You just don't in your daily life. But if you come on the retreat, you're, you're not forced to just go in and back into meditation, but it's just part of the timetable. And uh, you, you might experience something different. You might never experience it again, but it's time to set aside for yourself. So the other special thing um, to mark the anniversary is that uh, we're going to have some special Thai snacks midway. So the format of this evening, as you know, is the guided meditation with Lumpy Nicholas. Then we have our Thai snacks and refreshments. And then we have the talk with a Q&A session. So um, thank you very much for listening. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Lumpy Nicholas. Thank you. So welcome back to the December monthly talk. You hear that we have been having monthly talks now for a whole year, which is quite an achievement in itself. As usual though, this evening we'll start with about a half an hour of meditation, I'll have a short break after that, and I get to review the story of my life uh, in the time uh, between uh, the, the break and the lucky draw. So if nothing else is entertaining, we always have the lucky draw to make up for it at the end. For those who haven't meditated before, and I understand there are some, um, meditation, it is a way of working with the mind in a way that uh, you can bring body and mind back together again. Uh, given that for, for many uh, of the tasks that we have in our life, uh, body and mind tend to be drawn quite far apart. Um, sometimes we might be in one place, but our mind is on completely another thing, not only in a metaphorical way of speaking, but also actually physically. We might have gone home, but our mind is still somewhere around the office worrying about the work. We may be walking down a shopping mall, but our mind might be in the shopping windows. Uh, on all the colorful displays. And because mind and body are separated, often uh, we tend to find that we have very little control over our states of mind. So bringing body and mind back together is one way of having a little bit more control over uh, the more positive aspects which could be kept in the mind and not wasted if our mind were focused uh, inside rather than on outer things. There are many ways of bringing mind and body back together, but the way we tend to practice here <coughs> at the center in Woking is by a method of visualization. And the reason for that is that usually for the mind, you can't actually see it directly. It's hard to work with something you can't see. But if you are able to use your mind to visualize, so that means conjuring up a picture such as a picture of the sun shining in the sky, for example. You can imagine that sort of picture. Um, although you can't see the mind, because the picture has been produced by the mind, by working with the picture, it also introduces the mind to the same place you bring the picture to. So if you want to bring body and mind back together, you bring the picture within yourself, and the mind will follow. And uh, in practice, the meditation consists of, first of all, relaxing ourselves physically, relaxing all the muscles, usually for the first five minutes of the practice. After that, emptying our mind of the usual things we tend to worry about, uh, as far as possible. 
And then we focus inwardly, as if inside our body is an empty space, and we bring the picture of the sun down into the center of our tummy. Bring it away from the brain down to a more central place. Uh, it's a center for intuition. We believe in the mind. So visualizing a bright object at our center. And for those who have a problem with thoughts cropping up in the mind and possibly interrupting the continuity of meditation, often we introduce what's known as a mantra as a way to try to reduce the number of thoughts in the mind. And the, the idea behind having a mantra is as long as you've got some sort of word passing through your mind, it's very hard for other random thoughts to insert themselves in your thought processes. So you might already have a mantra, in which case you could use that, just fine. If you don't happen to have a mantra, then you might like to use this one, Samma Arahang. It's an Indian word which means a pure state of mind achieved in the proper way. You don't say it out loud, that would be very embarrassing, but it's as if you hear the sound of the word coming up from the center of yourself. And if you're worried about where exactly the center might be, it's down here at the point in the middle of yourself. I don't know how clear that is there. Your one's flashing. But your one shouldn't flash, it's just light for clarity, okay. Um, somewhere around the center of your body, yeah? And it may change as time goes on, in which case you just allow it to do that. And that's known as the development of the mind. So far so good? If you were sitting for meditation at home, you might sit in this cross-legged position, um, <clears throat> which is handy if you sit comfortably on the floor. Uh, many Westerners don't, however. And fortunately today we have chairs provided, but you might want to experiment with this position known as the half lotus position. If you are sitting for meditation at home, it is more stable than sitting on a chair in general. But you should notice the way the hands are put together with the right hand on top of the left hand and the index finger of the right hand up against the thumb of the left hand. And the idea of that is if you do get sleepy, then your thumb and forefinger are usually the first to go. So it gives you advanced warning just in case you are nodding off in your meditation. And the inside of your hands sits against the front of your tummy. And this gives you quite an upright posture, even without having to force yourself to sit bolt upright. So far so good. So normally <clears throat> we sit for meditation for about half an hour. So if you'd like to make yourselves comfortable. So we start by settling ourselves down into a comfortable position for ourselves in our meditation. Closing our eyes very gently. Closing them in much the same way we might close our eyes if we were going to go to sleep. And we slow ourselves down by taking a few deep breaths to ourselves, breathing in to the full extent of our lungs, and then breathing slowly and smoothly out again. Again, we breathe in the cool, refreshing air from around us. As we breathe out, we may feel that 
we're letting go of any previous worries or concerns that we've had. Each time you sit for meditation, we take a few moments to scan down through our body, making sure each and every muscle is relaxed as we go. We relax ourselves starting with the muscles of our forehead, releasing any tension in the muscles there before moving slowly on down to relax the muscles of our eyebrows and eyelids. Even the way we close our eyes should be as gentle as possible. We allow the muscles of our face to become soft. Taking care that we're not gritting our teeth together. And that our jaw is also relaxed. We move on down relaxing the muscles of our neck. If our shoulders are tense at all, we allow them to drop to their natural height. before relaxing the muscles of our arms, our forearms, our hands and fingers. So that as our hands rest in our lap, they seem to do so almost weightlessly. Then we continue by relaxing all the muscles of our torso, our chest, trunk and abdomen. Taking special care that our stomach isn't at all tense. Relaxing the muscles of our legs, all the way around to our feet and our toes. Till eventually all the way from the top of our head, right the way down to the tips of our toes. We'd be fairly satisfied that there's no remaining part of our body with any sort of stress or tension anymore. Having relaxed our body, we should find that we're left with the feeling as if it seems to have melted away into the atmosphere around us, leaving no more worries about our body anymore, in a way that we can turn our attention inward. To the feeling on the inside, a feeling of warmth and well-being, feeling of inner peace. This inner feeling by any other name we could call our state of mind. And it's something which can also be relaxed further. 
in preparation for the meditation ahead. But the way we tend to relax the mind is by letting go of all the normal things we tend to worry about in our lives. Whether it be thoughts of work, friends, families or studies. Regrets about the past. or speculations about the future. If we are able to shed all these possible sources of chatter in the mind, before long we find our attention settling back into the moment, into the present time, on the task in hand, reminding ourselves that we have nowhere to go and nothing to do. Meditation is what we are actually here for. And we are able to bring our attention back from a thousand different things in the outside world to a place on the inside which is almost like a bunker a place of shelter or a refuge from all the unpleasantness of the outside world a safe haven for the mind If we can bring the mind back in its entirety, it's as if we have a certain distance from the external happenings in our lives, but with that also a sense of freedom for the mind, lightness, a sense of the mind being self-sufficient somehow in its own happiness. And if we're able to engage with this more and more on the inside, before too long we'll have the feeling as if the same sense of joy and happiness starting from a single place on the inside will start to fill the whole of our body and mind in a way that leaves no space in the mind for any other sort of thought. And when we feel refreshed and relaxed both in body and in mind. Very gently, using no effort at all. We imagine that inside our body is just an empty space, a hollow cavity without any organs or tissues, muscles or bones. Inside this empty space of our body, somewhere in the area of our abdomen, we remember that picture of the bright shining sun, which we imagined a few moments ago. But this time, instead of being in the sky, the picture of the sun appears in miniature, shining at the center of our body, 
shining with a cool, clear light. A light with a softness similar to that of the moon, more than of the sun itself. We don't worry too much about whether the actual picture of the sun is very clear or not. Even if it's vague, we accept it anyway. In this way, we allow the picture of the sun to become clearer on its own and in its own time. We should find that our attention wanders off onto other things each time we realize we simply bring our attention back again to that picture on the inside as before. If it wanders, we bring it back. And each time we bring it back, it should become a little bit easier to keep it there the next time round. As for the possible problem of there being thoughts in the mind. <coughs> for some people who are not so troubled by thoughts, it is sometimes possible simply to ignore the thoughts and avoid giving them even the time of day, in which case they tend to die down by themselves. However, for those who are new to meditation or who find that there are so many thoughts in the mind that it's hard to know where to even start ignoring them, it may be better just to start with the use of a mantra, hearing the sound of those words coming up from the center of your bright object with the words Samma Arahang Samma Arahang Samma Arahang over and over again lightly gently and continuously helping to lead the mind deeper at the center while freeing the mind of any interrupting thoughts the two things help one another hand in hand. The bright object that we've imagined and the sound of the mantra. Helping the mind to stay for longer and longer periods of time in the center. If the picture changes, we follow it in its new form. There's no need to change it back again. The picture disappears, you can think of a new one. Otherwise, we simply follow the way the inner experience in the mind evolves. Observing without a mental commentary, without judging our own experiences, without getting excited by new things that happen in the mind and not becoming frustrated if there seems to be no change. Sounds around us distract us, we simply bring our attention back. If we're uncomfortable, we can move, but doing so gently in a way that we don't disturb the stillness we've built up in our mind. We cultivate our attention in this way, lightly and gently, a few more moments now in silence until we come to the appropriate time.
Sama Arahan over and over again, keeping your mind in the center, helping to keep your mind free of any extraneous thoughts, your attention always remaining with the inner image at your center, following it as it develops according to its own nature, trying to avoid the temptation to use too much force with the mind. Always being as gentle as possible in the way that you approach the mind, in the way that you hold the object in your attention, in the way that you apply the mind, the same lightness as a feather floating down to settle on the surface of some water so lightly that the surface of the water is not even broken. We we'll continue in this way for a few more moments in silence until we come to the appropriate time.
ุทธาพระปัทธาปัจเจกานัญญามลังอรหันตนันจเตเจนารกรรมบันดามิสัพพโซสัพพุทธานุปาเวนะสัพพธรรมานุปาเวนะสัพพสังขานุปาเวนะสัทธาสุทีปะวันทุเท So if you'd like to come to the end of your meditation for this evening, you can gradually open your eyes. If you feel too uncomfortable, then slowly try changing to a more comfortable position before slowly finishing your practice. So, did you find that easy enough to follow for those of you who were new? Not too hard. Nodding off. <laughs> well, I'm sure this is something w h i c h s not too hard to solve. Um, but it may be that you need some sort of relaxation on a deeper level, in which case, um, if you need that first before you can get to the meditation bit, yeah. Um, But yes, practice makes perfect, and hopefully now you know the technique. You can practice it further, perhaps at home or uh, on a more regular basis, in a way that you can find maybe the times of the day which uh, help you to feel more energetic, which might not be the evening; it could be the morning, for example, um, and see how that goes. Yeah. Anyway, we'll take a short break now, and when you're ready, then. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, uh, story of the Siamese monk. <laughs>